Welcome back. It's Global Waterworks, the journey to productivity through coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching. Let's take a look. One-on-one -on -one coaching will be where you're going to spend most of your time. You know, certainly you're going to do team coaching. Certainly you have the administrative uh, things that you need to do. Sometimes you do have to be the super performer and jump in. But when you get down to coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching, of the four areas of management, this is where you're likely going to be spending most of your time. And this is where you will gain the greatest productivity from your people. And you'll be build a relationship with, with each individual in such a way that there, it begins to create a loyalty of you to them and them to you. So let's take a look at one-on-one -on -one coaching. One-on-one -on -one coaching, hopefully you can tell by this point, is really designed around feedback. So that so, you're, you're sitting with an individual, they're telling you what happened, and you, you know, okay, this was the circumstance that I was in. And you're, you certainly, you, you ask them, you know, what, what, describe the circumstance. What, what was the circumstance? What went on? And they can explain that to you. What did you do? Hmm. You, you can respond to that. And you can reinforce the feedback based on things that they did positively. Because nine times out of ten when you're coaching, much of what the individual does is going to require positive feedback. Some of what they do is going to need corrective feedback. And that's fine um, in the, as a manager. And you need to be good good at both and certainly you, you practice that. What were the results when you did what you did? Uh, what would you change? Being in the same circumstance, if you had it to do over, what would, what would you change? And here, if needed, you can make suggestions, but you have to be patient and listen and have the individual come up with the answers. And when they answer, well, it sounds like a good answer. What do you think would have occurred had you done that? And then check for next actions. If something has taken place. Maybe it extends into a different part of the objective or the full objective or in the person's relationships within the organization. What are, what are the next actions going to be? What are you going to do next? Reinforce feedback. This is so important. Like I said earlier, likely most of what one of your team members is doing is going to going to be good. And so give the positive feedback. This raises awareness of actions that achieve favorable results. Those actions will then be will will then will then be used in the future by the individual. They will do them again and again. They'll be repeated, which is a good thing. Reinforce the values of those behaviors. You, when you did that, it looks like this, this, and this happened that then created uh, such a, a significant opening that you put you totally back on your plan or back on the objective. That's, you know, elevate. But also don't be afraid to correct. But too many managers spend all their time correcting. And so what you know when you when a when the team member comes into the office or into the cubicle or into the one-on-one -on -one place of, of meeting, they know that you know, they're gonna, you know, come on, you're I mean, all I'm gonna do is get beat up because I can never do anything right. That's simply not the case. And that will not produce the kind of results in the long term that you want. You have to balance and more than likely, most of what an individual does will require an reinforcement so that it's done again and again and again. You want good behaviors to be repeated. Corrective feedback is the other side, but it's gentle. Remember, you're coaching to a process. You're not beating up an individual. So correct, you know, raise awareness of ineffective, you know, counterproductive behaviors. You know, what would you do differently? Why did you Why did you do that? Well, why didn't you? Why do you think that didn't work? Um, what would you do differently? How do you think that would work? You know, 
Should there have been more planning? All these kinds of questions. You're asking the questions and you're listening. You want to continue to build within the individual's <clears throat> confidence for them to perform in, the, perform in the future and for them to think deeply about what they're doing, how they're doing it, and the results they're achieving. Do this in just like when you're encouraging good behavior, when you're correcting in a professional way um, poor behavior, wrong behavior, um, it reduces the likelihood that it's going to reoccur. This is you're in a relationship with the individual and you're having a conversation and you're coaching to a process. You're not coaching an individual. Clear expectations. So all the time you're returning to the objectives and the process that was put together by the individual or the team. So the, the, you're always returning there. Don't waver. It's the objective, it's the time frames, and it's the, it's the process. Review the progress always. Where are, they, where are they against the process they put together? How, are they on the schedule that was put together to achieve, achieve the objective? If not, we need, a, we need a, a touch up on the plan, an alternative plan, a change, whatever it might be, but then have them take that away as an action, but set the time to review it. And it should be in a pretty short cycle so that if you need to do a redo on a plan, within a couple of days you should be reviewing that because you want to, want to get the team or the individual back on schedule as rapidly as possible. And then you check. Preparation coaching. You know, CBR questions, you know, um, so circumstance and questions prompt the employee to identify the desired results identify and they wait alternatives. You can see what's on the screen here. Determine the best actions. The whole idea here is their thinking. They're improving their thinking about their position, their responsibilities, and the objectives and the performance and the outcomes that they should be achieving. Always, you know, you, you're, you always think you're, you're, like I said, we said at the beginning, you're always coaching. What would you do differently? What's next? Uh, details of the circuit, whatever it m might be. And, and it, it, this is a, you know, a process which through your coaching, you're increasing productivity of the individual and the team. And therefore, your responsibility as a manager moves from managing to leadership.